My girlfriend's brother kissed me. I enjoyed it, and I'm confused. Here's my story. I was at my girlfriend's place. She had arranged a dinner with her parents to officially introduce me to them. And as anyone could expect it, it did not go well. But there was something else remaining for that night. And it went on something like this. I was in the kitchen helping Nolan, Vanessa's younger brother, with dishes, when he suddenly stepped closer and kissed me. The movement was so surprising that for a good while I did not look away from him. He took it as a good sign and tried to kiss me again. It was only when I moved my head away that he took the hint. I am sorry, I muttered as a nervous flush crawled up my cheeks, but I was sure there was something else on my face. Confusion. I do not, um... And Nolan seemed to understand that. I kissed you because I liked you, he said. I didn't understand that statement. Neither was I single, nor was I gay. Plus, he was my girlfriend's brother. Jesus. I'm sorry, Nolan, but this isn't appropriate. Dating your sister. Right, he said, and stepped back. I'm sorry. Jesus. Then he turned and left. I took a deep breath and turned to the sink, clutched at its edges, and I hoped that I could leave my girlfriend's home already. I didn't think I could stay any longer. When Vanessa stepped into the kitchen, I told her I needed to leave immediately. She looked slightly disappointed, but then agreed to let me go. Within five minutes, I was out of that house. I didn't ever want to go back. What a messy day it turned out to be. To explain my current situation and crisis, I would need to go slightly back in time, because there was more than what I could articulate. To be very honest, if it was not for Nolan, I would not be sitting here and wondering what the hell was wrong with me. And yes, that included overthinking the sweet gesture made by my roommate, Simon, every now and then. To begin, Vanessa and I started dating nearly 11 months ago. We had the same classes that semester, and we hit it off immediately. She approached me first, and I proposed first. After that, it was easier being part of the romantic relationship we aimed to establish. Then the semester ended, and her younger brother joined uni as well. He was in the first year, and sometimes some of our professors held both years' classes together. Since Vanessa and I no longer shared classes, she gave me the responsibility to look after her younger brother, and I intended to do so, but Nolan was a step ahead. Looking back after the recent event, I could say his behavior was as obvious as admirers could be. He was doing and saying everything right to my face, and I was too oblivious to take notice of everything. Perhaps it was for that very reason that that kiss surprised me so much. That plus the fact that I was dating his sister. I hadn't seen it coming. With the recent questions, I started asking myself. I didn't think I could have ever done so in the first place. Life sure had a way to get on my nerves. Soon after the classes commenced, Nolan started approaching me for help. He would either ask help for his assignments or some topic that he was sure I understood better than him. As his sister's boyfriend, I did my best to help him with it. Besides getting close to your partner's family, mostly promises good things. And I happened to think it was. But now I could look back at one particular incident and say no. Nolan was moving far ahead and I had foolishly encouraged that in him. It was late evening and Nolan had late classes. I decided to wait for him to make sure he reached home safely. When he found me waiting outside his class, he smiled so wide I was sure he could have made anyone jealous, but I only thought of it as a sign of gratitude. Nolan and I were faring well, but I took his smiles as green signals that he approved me for his sister. But then he dragged me to the local supermarket and wondered if we could eat ice cream. I agreed. In the middle, he said, well, it sure looks like a date. Instead of setting the record straight, I merely chuckled and ruffled his hair. You can think of it of any way you want, Junior. And now I was groaning into my pillow. If only I had said something then. Several such instances passed my mind when I sat down to think about it. And there were moments way worse than the ice cream date. I was oblivious to the kind of signals I was sending Nolan's way. He was feeling sweeter and sweeter for me. And the kiss was a direct result of that. But that wasn't all to my crisis. There was another feeling that was making it so bad for me. Despite the guilty feeling encasing my soul, I couldn't help but rethink those seconds in Nolan's kitchen. Even though I felt ashamed and embarrassed to think in this manner, I couldn't deny that I actually liked it. I liked the press of his lips against mine. It was an extraordinary feeling, not the kind that I had with Vanessa. With Vanessa, I did not really feel much when we kissed. The kisses we shared were just that, kisses. Yes, I did feel safe and secure in a relationship with her, but there wasn't that spark between us. But when Nolan pressed his lips to mine, I did feel that spark. Now I wasn't sure if it was for him or the fact that it was my first kiss with a man. Considering how poor my history of self-reflection had been, I would say it was the latter. I could say with confidence that I did not feel anything romantic for Nolan. But the more I thought about it, the more guilty I felt. If I cried into my pillow, no one had to know. 
but someone did find out, and it happened to be my roommate, Simon. As I mentioned earlier, Simon was extraordinarily observant. He was the embodiment of empathy. That was why my tears did not slip his attention. But instead of cornering me and demanding an explanation about my crisis, he merely handed me a glass of warm water and asked if I wanted to talk. If there was one person I could share my problems with, it was Simon. Simon was smaller and slimmer than me, so when he sat down in front of me with haunched shoulders, I could not help but feel safe. He really knew how to make one comfortable in their skin, and I appreciated that about him so much. No one had any idea. Edvin, you didn't eat lunch or breakfast? I'm sorry, I'm not hungry, I replied. He sighed but nodded and said, Would you like something to drink? Coffee, maybe? When I shook my head, he moved away to stand up. He wasn't going to bother me anymore. He did not want that. But I held his wrist and asked him to stay. I told him I wanted to talk if he wanted to listen. Curious and kind he was, so he said yes. I was glad. Something happened at dinner, I began. Vanessa's parents definitely do not like me, and I am unsure why. But I am less curious about that now, since something else happened there. He nodded curiously and sat in front of me, like this. He looked small. I shook off the thought that I sort of wanted to hug him. Wanting to hug Simon was an old emotion. It was not my fault, he always looked so cuddly. I brushed that feeling now because this was not the proper time. I was sure Simon wouldn't appreciate that either. So you know her brother, Nolan? He nodded, and I continued. I was in the kitchen helping with the dishes as a last ditch attempt to impress Vanessa's parents, and Nolan came to help me, suddenly, and I'm unsure why, he kissed me. Oh, Simon replied. Exactly my reaction, I shouted. I was confused as hell and he kissed me again. Simon, he kissed me twice. You didn't stop him? He asked. I did, I replied. Okay, Simon began softly. Did you tell Vanessa? She needs to know. I shook my head. I had begun wondering about that. I just couldn't muster up the courage to call her and tell her about it. I was worried it would ruin the sibling's relationship, and there was a good chance it would ruin Vanessa's and mine too. And although Simon looked like he understood my point, he still reminded me that it would be better to let her know. If for nothing else than for the sake of your relationship. But, I began, and bit my bottom lip. If it ruins their relationship. Simon shrugged. To be very honest, I have never faced this kind of issue. I have had boyfriends in the past, so such things could have happened. Even so, I still think it's better to let her know. Honesty is the best policy, I muttered. Simon smiled. Exactly. He looked so open, friendly, and a total sweetheart at this moment that I couldn't help but hold his wrist again when he moved to leave some five minutes later. Simon, I said, there's something else that you need to know. Oh, he said, and looked down. Despite the flush that worked up my cheeks at the sudden attention to my hold on him, for whatever reason that it might have come on my cheeks, I did not remove my hold. I held his wrist and then rubbed the inside of his wrist when he looked a little something something that I couldn't exactly put a finger on. But Simon had looked like that several times in the past and I didn't think much of it. It's just that I swallowed as shame threatened to engulf me in its warm embrace. Simon, I might have liked it. He turned to me. The kiss? Are you talking about the kiss? I nodded. My heart was in my throat. I didn't think much of it when it happened. I mean, uh, Nolan kissed me, but two days in and I can't seem to forget the feeling of kissing. Simon looked a tad bit sad, but he encouraged me to speak further. Kissing him felt nice, Edwin. He asked and tried to remove his hand from my hold. I tightened my hold on his wrist but made sure it did not hurt him. I did not want him to go for whatever unfathomable reason. I wanted to talk to him about this for the whole night. Simon was gay and he had dated several guys. Heck, one of the guys he dated was a close friend of mine. In fact, that was how we met several years ago. He understood this better than I did. Not kissing him, I defended myself, but kissing a guy felt nice. The fact that it didn't blow me out of my senses surprised me. The thing is that I do not hate that I was kissed by a guy. When I think about it now, I don't feel upset. I mean, I feel upset that it happened when I was in a relationship with Vanessa and it was Nolan, a guy who I think of as my younger brother. But the kiss from a guy, Simon, and I don't know what to think now. Edvin, I don't want to freak you out, but... But? I asked and looked into his eyes. Consciously, my hold on his wrist tightened and he winced a little. I apologized and rubbed the inside of his wrist to soothe the pain. I might have caused. Maybe you need some time to think. He was choosing his words carefully. I knew and that kind of irritated me because Simon and I never really had to choose words carefully around each other. You want to say that it may be because I like guys too? Simon understood the irritation and merely shrugged. I'm saying Edvin. 
Well, I said and backed away and removed my hold on him. It was just one guy. Maybe I'm feeling this way because I'm overthinking. I nodded to myself. I will talk to Vanessa tomorrow. It should be better. Edwin, I'm here for you if you need to talk to someone. Thanks, Simon, I replied, but did not look at him. But right now, I just want to be alone. Please. Simon sighed but nodded. You can call me whenever. Would you like something to eat? I've made some sandwiches. Simon. Grilled sandwiches, he tried and smiled. A little goofy smile. The only reason I said yes to the sandwiches was because my friend looked cute. The next day in the afternoon, I called Vanessa and told her that I needed to talk to her about something important. It was the third day after the dinner, and I hoped it was not too late. Five minutes after Vanessa's arrival, I realized it was indeed too late, and that it was not only because I didn't know how to inform her about her brother's behavior, but because her brother had taken the opportunity to fill her ears with lie after lie. So when she saw me, instead of greeting me with one of her bear-crushing hugs, she greeted me with a slap to my face. There were a few people around us, but some of them did giggle at me. I looked at her in shame and shock. I should have known, she hissed, you disgusting little fag. Whoa, hey, what the hell? I asked and raised my hands in surrender when she backed away from me. Her face was red and I knew she would not appreciate any kind of touch, no matter what the intention. So I stood at a distance. What are you talking about? What did I do? What did you do? She screamed. You kissed my brother, you asshole. I looked at her quite baffled at the nonsense she was spewing. I did not kiss. He told me everything, she said. He told me you tried to kiss him in the kitchen. And when he said no, you tried to force him. I will kill you, Edvin. Stay away from my brother and me. That's a lie, I said. I did not. Your brother kissed me. He kissed me twice. She did not say anything but simply glared at me. Vanessa, believe me, I tried again. A little desperately now. I wanted to tell you, but I didn't know how to. I was doing the dishes when he kissed me twice. When I told him it was wrong, he ran away. Vanessa, you have to believe me. But she shook her head. Stay away. It's over between us, Edvin. Vanessa, please. She shook my hand and stepped away. I don't want to see you again, Edvin. And that was how it ended between us. Eleven months down the drain, just because of a darn lie spoken by a darn liar. I believe that if I had ever found Nolan, I would at least give him a nice punch. He deserved that much, at least. When I returned home, I must have looked devastated and ruffled enough to Simon because he immediately helped me on the couch and again brought me a warm glass of water. He sure loved giving me a warm glass of water. Not even going to ask, he said. Nolan lied to her. I told him in disbelief and continued the conversation between us. I told him about everything that transpired between Vanessa and me in 15 minutes that we stayed together, and Simon seemed to understand that, though he did seem a little pissed by the end of my rant. Surprisingly, wasn't crying. I was gravely upset though, and it was because of the wrong impression I had left on Vanessa. I was sure she would spread the word around soon enough. She said it was embarrassing. I was ashamed to come out in the 21st century. Simon shook his head. She doesn't understand anything then, he said. If coming out was so easy, it wouldn't cause so much heartache and fear in us people. I knew about Simon's coming out story. His father was accepting, but his mother wasn't. The little permanent mark on the corner of his right eye was proof of that. When Simon's mother threatened to leave Simon's father if he didn't drop his support for him, Simon's father left Simon for his mother. Since then, he hadn't had a single contact with them. I understood this was personal to him, and I did not want to say anything to disapprove of his experience. I held his wrist again, and I told him I was sorry, but he gave me a confused expression and told me I shouldn't be the one apologizing. What did you say when she said that? He asked and looked down at our joined hands. I didn't say anything, I answered. I didn't have an answer. Oh, Edvin, he said and hugged me. Although he was shorter and smaller than me, it still felt nice as hell hugging him. It was nice as before, and this feeling seemed like something permanent. And I was glad it was so. I really needed it, and it was only when he patted me on the back that I realized I was crying. Fuck, it was so embarrassing. Two weeks after that strange breakup, I was still dealing with confused emotions and feelings, and the big question of why I could not forget about the kiss with a guy, and why the hell I still wanted to kiss him. And living with Simon was not helping me. It wasn't like I was so aware of Simon's presence for the first time in my life. I had always been conscious and aware of his presence in my life, but I believed it had something to do with the raging question in my head about my sexuality, that I could not disperse the thought that there was something so special about Simon. Simon was making dessert. He said his mother had taught him, and I told him that I couldn't wait to taste it. He looked so happy and spoke something in Spanish that I couldn't wrap my head around. When I asked him what he meant about that, he simply shook his head and went to his kitchen duties, as he liked to call it. It wasn't like I did not work in the kitchen, but Simon had relieved me of kitchen duties for a while. 
He said I needed a little break to get through my troubles peacefully. So I was sitting at the dinner table and helping him with little things. From here, I could see him shuffling in the kitchen. So I brought my laptop in front of me and I did what any character in a gay rom-com did. I pulled out quizzes, made sure Simon wasn't looking. I didn't know how to explain this to him. When seven quizzes told me I might either be bi, gay, or even demi, I took a deep breath, rubbed the hand over my mouth, and closed my laptop. Yeah, this was some heavy stuff. I walked into the kitchen and asked Simon if he needed some help. He gave my flushed face a thorough look and narrowed his eyes. What dirty thing were you doing on your laptop, Edvin? Nothing, I squealed and coughed a little. What can I help with, Shorty? I asked to distract myself from poking too much, because I damn well knew I would let it all out in front of him. Don't call me that, he hissed and showed a knife to me. Oh, I said, raised my hands. Not there again, sir. I couldn't hold the laugh, though. He looked like an angry little kitten. The same evening, I asked him the million dollar question rolling in my head. What do you do when you found out you like guys? He poked the inside of his cheek with his tongue and looked up at the ceiling. I felt giddy, if I remember correctly, he began. I mean, I had always sort of known I was not attracted to girls, so when I really realized and accepted myself, I felt giddy as hell. I remember walking into the school hallways the next day and looking at guys and wondering which ones wanted to kiss me. He looked at me when I gave a little laugh. What? he asked. That's some confidence right there, Simon. He shrugged with a cute smile. I was kind of popular in high school, so don't think I wasn't confident. I was proved right. The next day, one of the basketball guys approached me and asked if I was single. I told him I was the same evening. They went on a date. It was actually my first kiss. Wow, I replied. Tell me more. But it didn't really last long, Simon continued. Although he liked me, he said he did not intend to ever let anyone know of it. Not even his best friend. He wanted to keep you as a secret? Simon nodded. I tried to understand him, but he grew very toxic by the end of the second month. When I told him that I'd rather date someone else than someone like him, and he hit me. It was then that I realized I needed to be careful. It wasn't like I could tell anyone what he was doing to me. Sorry, I told him, feeling angry at whoever this boy was. You don't need to tell me now, Simon. Let's talk about something else. I tried to change the topic. He smiled at my attempt. But I guess in the end, my answer is that when you feel something, you should not be afraid to give it a try. It may or may not work, yes, but at least you would not be dreading it for your whole life. He lay down beside me and looked into my eyes. Are you still thinking about kissing a guy? He asked. I swallowed and thought of lying to him, but I couldn't do so. He seemed to understand what I was trying to say, and he nodded. Then maybe think about it some more, and then we can look for a cute boys who'd like to kiss you. Then you'll know for sure. Then he winked at me. I smiled and looked up at the ceiling. What if it's you? I blurred out. Huh? He murdered and tried to catch my eyes, but I intentionally avoided his eyes. What if I want to try it with you? I did not know where all this bravery was coming from, but then Simon looked more amused and curious than upset and offended. I was glad I let it out. I didn't know if a kiss between us would ever happen, but at least I knew I would not have to sail this sexuality exploration journey all alone. Well, he said, and bit the bottom of his lip. It's your choice, whether you want, he added softly, and a flush worked up his soft golden cheeks. I grinned and acted confident, though anyone with working eyes could tell I was near to a nervous breakdown. I wanted to kiss him, I knew I was excited to see if the kiss with a guy still brought that spark within me, but at the same time I could feel an oncoming headache. I knew if it was, but even then, I pressed it on. What about right now, I asked. Simon swallowed and finally looked at me. You recently had a breakup and I have long stopped thinking of her. It wasn't exactly the truth, but I was not really beating myself over it anymore. I had tried contacting Vanessa a few times over the past week, but she had only blocked me across all social media and my number after leaving a trail of swear words. I believed it was signal enough. I wasn't going to impose myself on her. I have long stopped thinking of her, I continued, but I haven't once stopped thinking about what kissing a guy would feel, so help me, Simon. I was nearly begging. He nodded, but when I did not move, he rolled on top of me and asked if I was alright with it. I held him around his waist and I told him it was. I was not feeling nervous with him, but I did feel anxiety crawling up my skin. Now was when I would know the truth. Did I know myself enough? I was 20, but did I know myself enough to know if I liked the guy's touch? The unknown was enough to shake me to my bones. Thankfully, the room wasn't lit enough for Simon to see that, and he leaned down to press a soft kiss against my mouth. Then he pulled back, and I looked into his eyes. He asked me if it felt okay, and I nodded a little, and tightened my hold around his waist. He was not heavy, and I knew that, and I told him I wouldn't mind if he sat on my lap. 
That way, I would feel more in control, not totally out of my senses. He seemed to take my advice and did so. Then he kissed me again. This time, I kind of reciprocated it. He seemed relaxed when I did that. I guess he was worried that he was crossing some boundary. It was only when his hand rested on my heart that he pulled back and looked into my eyes. Are you alright? He asked and crawled out of my lap. Shit, Edvin. Are you crying? He asked and rubbed the tears from my cheeks. I'm so sorry, Edvin. Did I do something wrong? Edvin, please, say something. I held his hand on my cheek. I'm sorry. I liked it. He looked at me in disbelief. Edvin, if something's wrong, please tell me. Nothing's wrong, I told him, freaking out because I kissed a guy and I liked it. Simon, I used to think that I had myself figured out, but apparently I don't even know what I like. It's scaring the hell out of me. What else do I not know, Simon? He pulled me into a light hug and rubbed my head. It's alright, take a few breaths and it'll be alright. You're still young, Edvin, just like me. You have a lot of time. And what did I do? I hugged him back and I cried on his shoulder like a baby. Thankfully, Simon did not mind tear tracks on his neck and shoulder. Honestly, I was glad I had him as my friend. If it were someone else, I sure would have reacted worse. The next morning, I woke up first. Simon was draped over me, so I had difficulty getting off of the bed without waking him up. And to be very honest, I did not really want to, but I had afternoon classes, and I knew I couldn't miss them. Even then, I spent some time admiring his sleeping visage and playing with his curls. He had the softest looking skin, and I wondered why I hadn't developed a crush on him. Perhaps I had, considering the mess that I was. I wouldn't even know if I had a crush on him. When it was time to get up, I patted his cheek and I draped the blankets around him before finally getting out of bed. Before leaving, I wanted to cook us some breakfast. Even though I was not an expert in the kitchen, I did end up making some burnt pancakes and sandwiches. The sandwiches turned out better than the pancakes. When it was time to get ready for my classes, I couldn't help but stare at my mirror for a long time. And I also couldn't help but ask myself, what was I? On my way to college, I wondered if I even needed to know that. Wasn't feeling soft and sweet attached to someone enough? Wasn't knowing that I was okay kissing both girls and boys enough? And that I didn't even care if I kissed whomever? It was about the feeling. If a touch could make me feel like I was alive, did I really need to label it anything? So at the end of the day, I couldn't help but ask myself, wasn't knowing enough? Sure, I had a long way to go. Simon was the first guy I was seriously invested in kissing. Before him, I had no experience in kissing guys. Well. Only if you did not count that impromptu kiss from Nolan weeks ago. But with girls, I knew how it felt. I might not have felt a lot kissing Vanessa, but I did feel enough with Amy, my girlfriend before Vanessa. So who was to say I was gay or bi or demi? I was certainly not straight. I knew that. And the weeks after the first kiss with Simon proved to me that. And no, we did not start dating. We did spend plenty of time together, working hard so that I could understand myself better. Weeks after that kiss with Simon, I found myself lying on the couch in the living room. Simon was singing some Spanish song that sounded like a melody to me. I could not understand the lyrics, but I sure as hell knew that I would always ask him to sing it for me the rest of our lives, and if we spent it. I rubbed my freshly cut hair and looked up when I saw Simon coming out of the bathroom. Oh, he said, and covered himself better in his bathrobe. I looked away to give him some semblance of privacy, even though my heart was in my throat and my mind was provoking me to take another look. I didn't know you were already awake. Yeah, I didn't have a good sleep last night. Sleeping after 5 felt like nonsense. I increased the volume of the TV. I had it lowered only because I wanted to hear Simon better. Something worrying you? He asked softly. Yeah, I replied with a cheeky smile and looked into his eyes. The fact that you're right here and that I want to kiss you. He huffed out a laugh and turned to walk into his room. Work on yourself, Edvin. I'm trying to, I replied and looked back at the TV. My skin tingled with the promise of a kiss the constant notifications on my phone notified me that my mother had seen my message. I had just told my family about this thing with Simon, and I was nervous and afraid to know what they would say, and I really didn't want to find that out until Simon was right here with me. At the same time, I was worried about what kind of reaction it would bring out of Simon. Simon was ostracized by his family because he was gay, so would it hurt and pain him if my family did the opposite? I sighed and decided I did not want to take the risk of hurting Simon, so I grabbed my phone with shaking fingers, I pulled open the notifications. It turned out that my family did not have a problem with it. By the time Simon came out of his bedroom, I was nearly choking on my tears. My family's supportive messages sat on the phone screen. Each one said they would stand by me so that I would have someone in such a confusing time. When Simon saw me, he thought I was hurt. He immediately sat by my side and held my face, where he etched on his face. Edvin, is everything alright? He asked. I pulled him down with me and then kissed him square on his mouth. 
This was the first time I had initiated a kiss between us, but I was so happy that I didn't even think of that until much later. Everything's alright. Just so happy, Simon. He giggled in confusion, and I rubbed a thumb on his cheek. He really was so beautiful. I wanted to bring him to my family and wanted to tell him what an annoying thing it was to figure oneself out when it came to sexuality. That's good to know, he said, and dropped his head on the sofa. I was still leaning over him, so some of my tears fell on his face. I stopped for his sake. Listen, I was wondering if you'd like to come to my home during the semester break. We have a nice house, it's big, and the beach is only 20 minutes away. You would love it. Hey, he said and nodded at me with a little smile. I would love that. When we went to the local cafe the next week, the waitress asked if we were dating. She said if we were, it would be on the house. I guess I understood why she said that. Simon and I had shared a few short kisses here and there. Nothing obnoxious and out of the line, obviously, but enough that I did not freak out and we were not dating. But then Simon caught my eye and I thought, well, could let this one go. We are, I told her. She grinned widely and clapped her hands. You guys make a cute couple. OMG. I root for you guys. Enjoy your evening, boys. And then she went off. When we were sure she was out of earshot, Simon and I burst into little giggles. And I looked at him and thought, well, maybe someday I would be brave enough to accept it all more warmly and actually make Simon my boyfriend. But for now, our trip to my family home and these little dates with Simon were enough. And oh, obviously the kisses. The kisses made it better. Conclusion. We did not start dating right after the trip either. I never told Simon that I did not want people to know about us, but he did not seem to mind. Whenever I said that I worried that he would get hurt on my journey, he replied that he just wanted to make sure I did not have to navigate all of this alone. Simon had faced the worst after coming out, ostracized and left alone as he was by his own family. To make up for what his family did, I made sure that my parents smothered him with their love. To be very honest, I was glad I had supportive parents. I couldn't imagine going through what Simon did at a stage where I did not even understand myself. But to make sure, Simon did not get hurt while I figured myself out. I vowed to keep him happy. Vanessa never figured out the truth and we fell off, never to come together again. In a way, I was glad. I had moved way past her and I intended to keep it on. The end. Is knowing really enough? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our rainbow force and stay wholesome.